Hello Linux lovers, I'm Wimpy, welcome to my world. In this video I'm going to make an external 2TB SSD at a fraction of the cost of a pre-made unit. But before I get into how to make it, it's probably worth explaining why I need such a large external SSD in the first place. In Season 11, Episode 30 of the Ubuntu Podcast, we discussed installing lots of virtual machines of lots of different Linux distros on external USB storage. At that time, I was using a homemade one terabyte external SSD, and as of today, I have 850 gigabytes of virtual machines on that drive. So it is time for an upgrade. I could have opted to use much cheaper spinning rust in an external enclosure, but I travel regularly, so I wanted something small, light, and robust. At the time of recording this video, the SSD I'm going to use for this project costs £280 and the enclosure costs another £22. So that's £302 total or $385. The equivalent Samsung portable SSD T5 2TB costs £480 or $613. So we're looking at a £178 saving or $228. That's not too shabby. However, these significant cost savings can only be achieved when making your own 500 gigabyte or larger drives. The cost difference between an off-the-shelf Samsung T5 250 gigabyte model and a DIY 250 gigabyte drive is only three or four quid. And that is about five bucks for our American friends. So let's get into it. To make the homebrew external drive, I'll be using a Western Digital Blue 2TB M.2 SATA SSD and a USB enclosure that can adapt M.2 B key SATA SSDs of 2230, 2242, 2260 and 2280 form factors. The enclosure is black, brushed aluminium and it came with a short USB-A to USB-C cable, a screwdriver, which I used to assemble the enclosure, three screws, and a back plate and back cover. You'll find links in the description below to the SSD and the enclosure that I used. To fit the SSD, you first need to remove the controller PCB from the enclosure. I used tweezers from my iFixit Pro Tech Toolkit. I needed to relocate the brass standoff on the PCB so I could fit it in the correct position for my 2280 form factor drive. Insert the SSD into the controller, then push the groove of the standoff into the crescent of the SSD fixing point. Screw the standoff into place, briefly admire your progress so far, and slide the controller back into the enclosure. Finally, insert the back plate, screw it into position, and then apply the back cover. Now you can plug your new external SSD into a USB port of your favorite Linux loving computer and format the drive. I opted to use GNOME disks to format the SSD with the ext4 file system, which took just a few seconds. And a click of the play button mounts the new SSD, which is now ready for use. Job done. I've specifically opted to use an M.2 SATA SSD because they are significantly cheaper than NVMe PCIe SSDs and the performance benefit of NVMe drives when connected via USB will be completely lost. Also be aware that external M.2 enclosures are nearly always for the SATA protocol. So plugging in an NVMe SSD won't work unless you specifically seek out an NVMe compatible enclosure. Although I'm using a brand new SSD, if you have a desktop or laptop with an existing M.2 SATA SSD installed, a cheaper option might be to upgrade the drive in your computer and get an enclosure to transform the old SSD into an external drive. If you're interested in a video about how to relocate VirtualBox machines to an external drive, then let me know in the comments. 
And in this video, I opted to use GNOME disks to quickly and easily format the new SSD. But if you'd like to see a video explaining how to manually format block devices in Linux to maximize the available space, then comment below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you loved it and ding the bell for instant notifications of new videos. And that's it for this one. See you next time.